Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center today and we are going to talk about shell rot in turtles and tortoises. But before we get into that, right here in this corner is our subscriber button. Make sure to hit that and we appreciate you doing so. And for those that have, we appreciate you following along week after week after week. All right, now let's talk about something here. Turtles, awesome animals. Like this guy right here, we're gonna get right up here. This is the Eastern box turtle. Now, these guys right here, absolutely amazing. Turtles, tortoises, aquatic land or otherwise, they will have issues from time to time called shell rot. Now, it's also known as ulcerative shell disease, okay? Shell rot is one of a couple of different things and it causes from a couple of different things, all right? So we're gonna talk about this today. Shell rot can happen on the shell, okay? Understand which is the top shell, which is the carapace. It can also happen to the bottom shell, which is called the plastron, all right? Now, with this being said, one of the first things that you start seeing when you have a turtle with shell rot is red fluid filled uh, anomalies underneath the platelets, okay? So essentially, it's almost think of like a bruise or a busted blood vessel underneath your skin. That's kind of what you're gonna see in some areas when we talk about the early signs of shell rot. Now understand something here. Understand this is just gonna be a broad overview of kind of what to look out for, and I will have some pictures here of accelerated uh, versions of shell rot when it comes to turtles and tortoises. But understand this, the causes, typically speaking, for shell rot that happens inside of a turtle or a tortoise is generally from either a cracked shell or from abrasions, meaning scrapes, scratches, cuts, or whatever, from debris, maybe inside of the habitat, or from another turtle or tortoise. Now let's break this down for just a minute. What I mean by this, is let's say you have your aquatic turtle, a red-eared slider, a painted turtle, a diamond bag terrapin, I mean, any number of aquatic turtles, uh, golden, the oriental golden thread, okay? So any number of aquatic turtles, uh, even the snapping turtle, soft shell, or the African side neck can fall into this category as well. Let's say inside of the water, they are trying to mate, or one bites at another one. Uh, or you have uh, items like rocks and things like that, like natural items inside of their habitat. They bump up against it hard enough and it creates a scratch or an abrasion on the shell. It can lead to a bacterial or fungal infection, which then in turn turns into ulcerative shell disease or shell rot, okay? Same thing applies with your turtles, uh, and your land turtles and tortoises. Now understand that with tortoises, especially like sulcata, <laughs> Solcatas especially, considering they have those forks in the front of the plastron, in the bottom shell, those, those forks, especially the males, are meant for combat. They're meant for flipping one another. So when you have two tortoises that's combating one another, they can cause these shell abrasions, as it were. Cause these openings in the shell, which would allow the fungus or bacteria to get in there and start doing its dirty work. No different than a human, when they get a scratch, it can lead to an infection. Well, that open wound is what leads to the infection. Now, with abrasions from housing items and things like that on your land turtles or tortoises, the same concept as your aquatic turtles. You have these rocky, high, uh, rocky climbing items. You have these long caves. Uh, maybe you've even got this flat rock, a couple of rocks with this big, nice flat rock, and they can go up underneath it like a natural hiding cave then anything that they can rub against or they can bang against that can cause uh, openings in the shell can create shell rot or can be the leading cause to allow shell rot to form, okay? Now, that doesn't mean take everything out of your habitat. No, this stuff happens naturally and things like this can happen. But it's just what to be aware of, okay? Now that we've talked about the causes of shell rot, let's talk about some ways in which just if you catch shell rot, you can actually treat this very, very easily at home. I don't do too much treatment over YouTube, especially by videos, because I'm just not gonna give people uh, any ideas about being able to essentially kill their animal if they don't do it right. But 
There's a couple of ways in which you can treat this. You can do it simply by using iodine, betadine, and then treating it with some neosporin. If it was a bacterial infection, if it's a fungal infection, you can treat it with something as simple as uh, fungal foot cream. Uh, works great. Now, typically speaking, in most aspects, a vet or a doctor uh, or uh, a, a doctor of veterinary medicine or somebody that's inside of the reptilian medical field like us, we would typically go to SSD cream. Uh, SSD cream works fantastically, uh, but that requires a prescription, so you don't always have access to that. Again, a simple fungal foot cream works great in treating, um, in treating shell rot. Now, Again, bacterial infections uh, or bacterial infections can be treated with the simple peroxide or the iodine, betadine, which acts like an antiseptic, and then neosporin or uh, veteracin uh, wound care treatment or antibiotic ointment. There's several different things in which you can utilize there. Now, again, this is just kind of a broad overview of this right here which is shell rot, and of course all the pictures that you've seen me put up before uh, of shell rot throughout the rest of this video. This is just a broad overview in what to look out for because especially with wild turtles, a lot of people are already calling us, hey, I found this turtle in the wild, or I found this turtle in the road, or I found this in my grass, or it was in my driveway, whatever the case may be, uh, from snapping turtles to box turtles to whatever. So it's going to happen, and you may end up finding some turtles with this issue. So. Feel free to get in touch with us, get in touch with a rehabber or a medical facility close to you. If you have any questions, we're happy to be able to help you guys out at any time at all. So our information will be in the description below for those that need to get in touch with us on questions about medical issues, uh, if they, whether it's shell rot or anything else that we've had inside of the videos before, uh, anything that we filmed on thus far. For those that have questions or they want us to film on different topics, please feel free to write us in. A lot of people are, and we're trying to catch up with all these videos as fast as we can. But this is Chad again. This is ulcerative shell disease, also known as shell rot in turtles and tortoises. This is the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We are the Reptile Rangers. We appreciate you following along week after week after week. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, make sure to hit the bell for notifications, and we appreciate you following along with us video after video. We'll either see you here at the zoo, or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.